Hello, my name is Stanley Carter and today I want to talk about the stabilized 2D node in the Blender node editor. So uh, before I start with explaining how things work, I want to show you a quick example of um, how this works and how the result could look like. And I'm going to use as an example a stop motion clip that I made recently. So the version here is the one without stabilization. So you can see it's shaking quite a lot. And then over here, I'm going to play the uh, version with the stabilization done. So this is how it looks, uh, how it looks like after um, after stabilizing the image. So you can see it's really much smoother than before. And yeah, that's basically what it does. So so let's start uh, with a new Blender scene and see how we can do that. So open up a new Blender scene, and yeah, just switch here, click on this on this button over here and switch to the movie clip editor which is the place where you can do all the tracking and also this stabilization. So here you can click on the on the open button to open up the video that you want to stabilize. Uh, so that's the one I want to stabilize and you can see already if you scrub through the timeline here you can see the video. I know I have just 49 frames, so I'm going to limit uh, the timeline to this range. And yeah, the next thing we need to do is just search for one point and track that. That one, um, so we can actually remove all the motion afterwards. So the best way to decide on which point you want to use is uh, to take one in the middle, so, so it should be um, close to the center of, of the the whole animation or the origin of, of the movement. So in my situation this point up here would be a good example. So um, make sure you, you go back to the first frame with for example shift and left key uh, left arrow key or you can just type in here one. So go back to the first frame and after you clicked on add marker uh, you can take that, okay I will do it again, <laughs> click on that one, add marker and then move it and place it somewhere uh, where you want to put it to. In this case I'll put it here. But you could also, you know, do it somewhere uh, in the face maybe or something. I just think that this place is going to be good for tracking because it has so much contrast <coughs> to the surrounding parts. So I'm going to uh, select that point, you can move it with the G by the way if you want to replace it or even move it in here. All right, and, and then when you placed it, you can just go ahead and click here on one frame further or click on this one to drag um, as far as it goes. So I know already that um, this this place doesn't drag uh, to the whole thing without some um, manual movements. So if you get the same thing uh, as I get right now, so, so you click then drag automatically and it stops somewhere like this, all you have to do is go back for one frame or no actually go one frame further again sorry and then with G move it to the same place as it was in the frame before so with the arrow keys left and right you can then switch around between those frames and have a look here if, if everything worked right and you can see I have a bit of an offset in here um, and that started a bit earlier so, so you might want to um, to even reduce uh, the, the error in here. So you can see uh, at frame 11 it looks like that and at frame 12 it looks a bit different and then you can just change it so that it looks almost the same in the next frame. And then here and from this frame on you can again try to track it. And if it doesn't work you just move it by hand and put it in here and go further for one frame and keep on doing that until you're done to the whole sequence. Alright, so I'm done now through the whole sequence and as you could maybe see in this time lapse, um, it didn't work very well, the automatic tracking. Um, the main reason for that was because I had a big reflection from that glass of the light, uh, which was somewhere here, and that 
you can actually see it in here too. So after this frame, the whole thing starts to get really bright and, and the whole color changed. So of course, uh, this wouldn't really track uh, automatically, but it's still a really good point um, to use for image stabilization. So I still thought I would use that one instead of searching for another one. And doing 50 frames isn't so much work, um, but I suggest you to do it properly because it will really change uh, and, and make a difference in, in your final result. Uh, yeah, so, so do that properly. And once you're done with that, um, click here and switch to the reconstruction mode where you can go here to this menu here. You can bring it up with N if you can see it with the N key or that plus uh, button here. Bring that menu up and then click here on 2D image stabilization. And then if that, that uh, track is selected, click on plus. And so in here, that's actually all we have to do. And we're done with that now. So next thing we can do is change to the node editor here. And down here, we can change the uh, image editor so we can see our render result later on down here. So now switch to the render nodes and then click here on use nodes. All right, now all we want to do in here is um, creating an, an input of, of the video. So, so like uh, adding the, um, giving Blender the path to the video and then do the 2D image st uh, stabilization and then here the output for the scene. So we don't want that. We just can go ahead and add an input, an image in this situation and then Go ahead and open up that video again. All right, then enter here the amount of frames, which is 49 in this situation here. And then um, and uh, add, add in a distortion to have note, the one called Stabilize 2D. And then just connect those three nodes and make sure that you uh, select here this video clip. And that's the whole node setup that we need. So it's really simple. You can already go ahead and render it just as it is and also move around with the arrow keys left and right to go through the frames. We'll see that it will automatically update down here uh, but we still have a big problem because right now we just see a part of the whole image. That's because we need to um, make sure that this resolution over here is the same as the image. So check real quick on the resolution of the image. Um, okay. All right, and also make sure that this is at 100%, so we have the whole image. But um, the thing is, when we go through the animation now with the uh, arrow cues, you can see already that um, Blender um, removes the, the, the movements and it's already a really smooth image and everything is fine. The only problem we have is that these borders um, get black because the whole image is being moved actually. So that these moving places are always at the same place. So as you can see, uh, we have these borders here and we don't want them. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, use a low resolution and crop the image. So I'm going to take away about 100 pixels on each axis, or even more here. And if you run that again, you will see that this is what you get. And you can again go through an animation and see if there's a black bar somewhere. And as you can see, there is nothing, um, nothing going wrong here. It's everything fine. Yeah, and that's kind of all you have to do because now you can just go ahead and select the output format whichever it is and also select an output and you'll see that when you click an animation this should run quite fast because all Blender needs to do is take the image move it around for a few pixels and again put it in here All right, and now that uh, the rendering is done, you can go to the output um, location and see how the rendered video looks like. And everything looks fine. 
and it's not playing uh, very fast because the resolution is so high so this is a a version with lower quality um, but it's the same result result so this is how it should look like and yeah that's all I wanted to tell you in this video I hope uh, you enjoyed this video again and of course I, I hope we'll see you again in my next video see you bye bye